Good evening, sports fans, and thank you for watching TV19 Sports. We are inside the gymnasium here at the south campus of White Bear Lake High School as we get to set to watch the Bears host the Chisago Lake Wildcats here tonight. You take a look at the records, White Bear Lake coming into this one with a record of 1-8, and eight, and Chisago Lakes with a record of 5-3. and three. I am Sam Erickson with my partner, as always, Michael Lawrence. How are you doing tonight, Michael? You know, I'm doing pretty good. I'm excited to see uh, White Bear play basketball, even though that they're on a little bit of a losing streak here, but hopefully tonight they can kind of right the ship against this uh, Wildcat team uh, in tonight's matchup. That's right. Both these teams faced off against Monomedi earlier this year. Uh, Chisago Lake's able to squeak by with a victory. White Bear Lake with a tough loss, but that was early on, even earlier on in the White Bear Lake season, and uh, Coach Lockwood interested in seeing what his team is like now with uh, this being their 10th game. Now we're going to take a look at some of the standings. Here's the Mississippi 8 standings. Yeah, Chisago Lake uh, has a record of 5-3, and 1-1 one and one in the conference. So they're about middle of the pack here. Now let's move over to the Suburban East Conference standings where we see White Bear is last with a record of 0-5 and 1-8 and and overall. So they got their work cut out for them, and hopefully they're just kind of looking for some improvement in tonight's basketball game. And hopefully uh, tonight will be a good barometer to see where they're at uh, going forward the rest of the season. Yeah, Coach Keith Lockwood mentioning that they had replaced nearly all of their starting five uh, from a season ago. But we're going to take a look at a couple key players uh, from this season and on both sides. Yeah, we're going to start with Chicago Lake. Uh, number 12, Trevin Nelson, junior guard, averages over nine points a game and number 21, Dylan Woods, senior center. I mean, you made the comment, we saw both these teams that he looks like a 24 year old, certainly a man among boys out there tonight. And then over on White Bear, we have number 14, Kyle Kniff, senior guard, averages over eight points a game and number 15, Blake Charles, sophomore forward who averages over six points a game. Now most of the production on this White Bear team comes from their guard positions and not so much their forward positions as uh, Charles is only about the uh, sixth leading scorer on this Bears team. So they don't get a whole lot of production inside the paint. It should be an interesting matchup uh, given the size difference. Uh, Chisago Lake looking a bit bigger uh, underneath than White Bear Lake. But we did get a chance to sit down with Coach Keith Lockwood before the game and got a couple keys to the game from Coach. Yeah, for sure. The first one is a complete game. This is a young and inexperienced a team so you're gonna go in runs where the team should stop playing well enough but hopefully they can get more experience and they'll be able to play the complete game number two is control the tempo this uh Santiago Lakes team if they beat it inside they, coach Lockwood feels that they're just gonna decimate the white bear defense and number three cancel out the height and we're doing so making sure that the Wildcats don't get comfortable in that half court set uh, Lockwood thinks that they can go full court pressure and hopefully get some turnovers to cancel out that height. Should be a big matchup as White Bear Lake tries to improve on the season. We'll have the opening tip off for you when we return. Community media from my point of view is um, organic. It's power. Public access to me uh, gives me an opportunity to get my word out to the uh, larger community of the town that I can't get to on my own. This is good programming. This is what people say, well, how come they don't ever write anything good in the news, right? This is the good news. What we're doing is critical, it's important. We have to stay energized and motivated to do this work in our community, but understand that our real mission is to hold up our part as we encourage others to hold up their part around the planet. Welcome back. We are here at uh, White Bear Lake South Campus as we await the tip-off between White Bear and the Chisago Lakes Wildcats. See the records there. White Bear coming into this one, one and eight on the year. Chisago Lakes five and three. And it looks like we are just about ready to get things going. And number 41, Carter Duncan wins the tip for Chisago Lakes. 
Saga Lakes representing the Mississippi 8 Conference. And White Bear Lake, of course, out of the suburban east. Yeah, first thing noticeable right away is you can see this Wildcat team has quite a bit of a height advantage against White Bear. And shot comes up from the outside. No good. That was Ethan Hickox for Chisago Lakes. Nice job pushing the pace for White Bear Lake, and they'll be first on the board. You know, just what a beautiful motion and transition that was for White Bear to get the two easy points at the other end. Carter Duncan tried to get inside. Number 21 there, Dylan Wood, one of the top scorers on the Chisago Lakes team. Trevin Nelson, the other top scorer. Hickox goes baseline, misses the easy land. Ball hits the baseline and will stay with the Wildcats. You know, each rebound that White Bear can kind of pick up against this bigger team is just going to be very important going in, uh, going into the uh, rest of the game because that only sets their uh, transitional game on the other end. Nelson gives a bit of a head fake, goes baseline, runs into a wall there, gets it back. Thinks about a three. Duncan now finds Wood inside. Wood gets the bucket and the foul. Yeah, Wood just beat his guy straight up. It gets the easy entry pass in the block and gets the nice and one opportunity. And he's got good size. He's going to be tough to deal with for White Bear Lake all night. They're going to want to stay away from the fouls as well. Wood short on the free throw, so we'll be tied at two early on in this one. You know, it's going to be quite interesting to see what White Bear is going to be doing once they get in their half court set. And it looks like the Wildcats are going in a 2 3 zone. It's Kevin May, number two, he passes it out. Carter Kahn. May back with it. White Bear really slowing the tempo here. Yeah, it looks like they're just kind of afraid to go work it inside the paint. We haven't seen one entry pass into the paint just yet. And as you said, Wildcats in the 2-3 zone. They're going to need to work the ball around quite quickly. Do a good job. They're swinging it outside, but too long on the three. You know, that was an airboat, but that's exactly what they needed to do against that 2-3 zone, was just do quick passes around the perimeter, and he was... Uh, wide open there, just couldn't uh, finish the deal. Number 14 there, Kyle Knips. Yeah, good look. Just a little too strong on the attempt. Meanwhile, Chisago Lakes throwing the ball away. It'll return to the Bears. Kevin May now up to Knips. Chisago Lakes showing a bit of full court pressure. Knips with an out driving baseline, looks to dish it off, does, a little long on the land. And Carter Duncan rebounds for the Wildcats. Dylan Wood streaking up the court. Pass comes in late and a little too high. And they'll turn it over once again to White Bear Lake. You know, it's still pretty early for White Bear, but I mean, if you're Coach and uh, Keith Lockwood, you have to be happy with the way White Bear's been playing. And uh, the Wildcats have had a couple of unforced turnovers here, and uh, they got a rebound and led to a transitional bucket. And, Still a tie game. And full court press once again. Nice job passing around the press. And an easy two. Blake Charles lays it in. You know, once they get their transition game going, it's been working pretty well. The, like the outlet passes, the knows where to go. And Carter Duncan called for the offensive foul as he uses the shoulder. Take a look at that easy lay-in for Charles after White Bear Lake breaks the press. You know, kind of doing an excellent job by getting a, a, a Carter Duncan to commit to him and leaves open the wide open man for the easy two. Or Khan working it into Blake Charles. Charles back out. Khan switches court. Khan throws up the three and rattles off the rim and falls to the Wildcats. Trevin Nelson pushing the pace. He gets it back. He'll take a three of his own. And that goes in and out. And ball last touch by Chisago Lakes. Yeah, the rims are just a little too hard for both these teams in the early going. 
And we're just over 14 minutes left to go in this first half. Four to two lead for White Bear Lake. This one's gonna be a matchup of size and style. Chisago Lake's definitely having the height advantage. Yeah, this one. White Bear really hasn't been working inside once they get uh, in the half court. So it'll be interesting to see if they just keep on passing it around the perimeter and settle for three points or they're actually gonna work it inside. They do kind of work it inside. Samuel Broberg works his way into the paint, but turns it over on the pass. Dylan Wood gets good position up and in. Yeah, Dylan Wood working against Carter Kahn has, has the size advantage there as uh, Santiago Lakes will have all night. Yeah, and that's what they're going to be looking for. Wood can get that position under the basket. I mean, they've been looking for pretty much every possession. Uh, successful a couple of times. Kevin May fakes, drives lane, throws up a runner. And that's just off, and looks like Charles is called for the over the back. So all tied up at four here, 13 minutes left to go first half. Dylan Wood, nice job by White Bear Lake getting a hand on it. Looks like Blake Charles disrupted that play. And White Bear with the turnover. Knips trying to create something, throws it a little bit out of the reach of Charles, and the turnover will go right on back to Chisago Lakes. Yeah, Knips was getting just a little too fancy. It just no need for that. Just kind of getting your half court set and trying to work the ball around and settle for kind of a better look. No, no reason to get more of a try and get like a highlight reel type of uh, point style. And Knips will actually take a Seat on the bench, number 11, Sam Schwartz checking in. And Hickox driving baseline, getting the easy lay-in. And Chisago Lakes will have their first lead of this one. At Chisago Lakes, all their points have been inside the paint, so they're getting some pretty nice, good, high percentage shots. Uh, something that Coach Andy uh, Keith Lockwood didn't want to see uh, in the early going so far. And Schwartz with an L baseline, takes a dribble. Ball falls to the hands of Dylan Wood, but looks like he had a foot on the baseline, so it'll stay with White Bear. We'll take a look at that. Schwartz trying to create something. Gets poked away, goes right back to Wood. Realizes a little too late that his foot was on the baseline there. Yeah, it looks like White Bear just needs to settle down a little bit more, get a little more comfortable uh, running their offense here once they get in the half court. Schwartz the inbound, looks for Broberg, disrupted by Hickox. He'll drive, dishes off, and a nice up and under, getting the lay-in and the foul, Thomas Gillick for the Wildcats. Yeah, just a fantastic play and uh, avoiding, avoiding the block, but yet getting the basket and the foul. Gillick to the line to finish the three-point play, and he will. And the Wildcats are now open to a 9-4 to four lead. So you can see why, maybe why Chisago Lakes has been so successful. Another, and uh, you know, what they like to do out there is to get high percentage shots, a lot of layups. Came in only one shot from the outside so far, and that was, you know, pretty much wide open kind of uh, daring them to take that. You know, they got the size that they can be successful against like other teams in the high school because they're not going to go up against too many teams that are going to be probably about just as big as them. I mean, they kind of lack kind of a true center, like that true tall guy at 6'8". But they're still impre impressively tall for a high school team. And Kevin May decides to cancel out that height the best way he can, shoots it in from long, and that'll make it 9-7. to seven. So big bucket from Kevin May. And we had a stoppage, looks like a foul away from the ball. Uh, Sashiago Lake, like they have been doing great in the paint, but it seems like they've been forcing a lot of turnovers on them, on themselves, and that's definitely helping out this White Bear team, which is kind of young, and they're trying to find an identity for themselves going forward. So Knips back in the game for White Bear Lake. Carter Kahn now with the ball. He tries to hand it off to May. 
And Chisago gets a hand and it eventually end up with the ball, and they'll head the other way. Yeah, kind of interesting no call there, as a, I guess the ref kind of deemed that as a 50-50 ball. Khan a little lazy on the handoff there, just sort of left it for his man. And Carter Duncan doing a good job on the Wildcats end, getting the you know, runner a, to go off the glass and in. You know, plays the glass off perfectly and gets another two points for him. And he's another one of those. He goes about six foot five. A couple of those guys on the floor. Uh, they have him listed six six. Dylan Wood at six five. They almost have Wood playing more of that uh, true center. Well, he's certainly anchoring the two three at the, under the basket. You know. He may not be the tallest in terms of height, but he's definitely the biggest in terms of brawn out yep. there for the Wildcats. Yeah, just a thick body, as you said, just anchoring that two man or that uh, two three zone, and uh, that turnover caused by Kevin May just trying to get a little too fancy with the passes. It leads to kind of another turnover. So I mean, White Bear just kind of needs to settle down. They don't need to. They're kind of shooting themselves a little bit in the foot. Not as much as Asiago Lake, who's definitely been helping out White Bear with all their turnovers, has about three or four here in the early going, uh, about first seven and a half minutes of this game. We'll take a look at head coach Chris Gagaro of the uh, Chisago Lakes Wildcats. Doesn't look very uh, pleased with his team during that timeout. Trying to sort a few things out. They do lead by four here with the, you know, roughly 10 and a half to go first half. You know, I mean, uh, White Bear just has not been able to stop their inside game. And I mean, it's just going to be one of those things that they're going to keep going back to until White Bear can stop it. And this was a concern for uh, Coach Lockwood, as he knew this would probably be happening. A nice job getting into the passing lane by Knips. He will be the last one to touch it, so the ball will stay with Chisago Lakes. Uh, but that's one way to to cancel out that height and that post game is trying to uh, stop that interior pass. And Dylan Wood will be fouled. Going for the inbound pass, trying to make a case that he was in the act of shooting, refs not buying it. You know, I thought he was trying to tell his teammate to go higher with the ball because oh, okay. he's so much taller. I think he might be right about that one. That was kind of throwing a level where uh, Given his height, he should, yeah, if you throw it a little higher, he should be the only one that can get it. Nelson from deep, he's short once again. Wood goes and gets it. He takes a little abuse under the basket. But keeps the basketball, and that'll be a foul against White Bear. That'll be their fourth team foul already in this one. Excuse me, fifth now. And it looks like after those, uh, that inbound and that rebound as well by Wood, looks like the message might be to... Uh, you know, not make him very comfortable when he gets the basketball. And dealing with a double team there. Can't pass out of it. Sam Schwartz gets the steal. He'll go for the layup. That'll be short. Knips on the rebound, kicks it back out to Schwartz. Schwartz will try the three-pointer. That rattles out. Knips on the offensive glass, and he'll get the putback. You know, Knips made some fantastic decisions on that last one. I mean, knowing that the team was out. An unfortunate turnover over there by White Bear. Yeah, tough break. Austin Chochette able to get into the passing lane, take the ball away, but stepped out of bounds, so the ball will go back to the Wildcats. Yeah, but on that last possession, Knips did an excellent job of re realizing what the situation was, passing it out for the open three-point play. Uh, look, but just didn't fall down, and then do a nice job getting for the second chance points. So although undersized, getting two offensive rebounds, on that last possession leading to the basket. And he was moving extremely well between those bodies. And we'll have a blocking foul as Tevin, excuse me, Trevin Nelson tries to go off the dribble. That won't go against Kevin May. And that will be the sixth team foul on the White Bear Lake Bears. So number 34, Nathan Thomas in. Six foot five junior up against Dylan Wood. Wood has a nifty move on him. And that'll make it 13 to nine. Yeah, just fantastic footwork by uh, uh, Dylan Wood, just using his pivot foot to work around uh, Nathan, Nathan Thomas there. And Kevin May doing a good job getting uh, some contact along the sideline. That one will go against Nelson. Uh, 
And Ips with it in the corner. He sees a double team. Now Sam Short's up top. Sago Lake still in that 2-3 zone. It looks like White Bear is kind of spreading out the floor, trying to open up some uh, more lanes going into the paint. Schwartz kicks it out. May with a fake. Back to May in a corner. He looks to pass it out. And before he does, he's called for the travel. So nice job by the Wildcats closing down on that zone and forcing a turnover. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if White Bear kind of keeps doing that, kind of spreading out that 2-3 uh, zone by spacing the floor and kind of artificially stretch out that 2-3 zone. And good take by Hickox, but he's a little too strong on the land. We'll have a foul away from the ball. That will go against Chisago Lakes. That one is on number 40, Thomas Gillick. That'll be his first. And the team's third. So Broberg takes the inbound back to Schwartz. Schwartz with it now. Gives off. Knips decides to pull up for the jumper. Too strong. Thomas on the rebound out to Schwartz. Schwartz for three. Just off to the left. Rebounds down. Hickox controls it and is fouled. Now White Bear's getting some good looks here on the three behind the three-point line. Just nothing has been falling, falling for them in this early going. Yeah, Sam Schwartz, a freshman guard, getting a couple nice looks uh, from the three-point line, just unable to convert them. The young freshman doing a good job so far here tonight, holding his own. And that one gets the shooter's touch and goes in. Chisago Lake now in the bonus. So that was the first of the one and one. And now Hickox for the second. And he'll make that one as well, opening up the lead to 15 to nine. As we count down to about eight minutes left to go here in the first half. Schwartz finally lets it go through to Broberg, kicked out. So Shet with the three. You know, that all started with uh, White Bear kind of spreading out the floor, passing it around the perimeter, and they finally got one of those three-pointers to fall. Trevin Nelson gets into the corner, throws up the three. That's off, Schwartz on the rebound. And he'll bring it up for the Bears. He'll find Chet again. He'll dish it, dish it off to Thomas. And Thomas with the lay -in. So White Bear Lake right back into this one now. They trail by one, 15 to 14. You know, if White Bear could be quicker on that transition, there have been opportunities there. They could get a couple of points and transition. And Dylan Wood will get the ball underneath the basket, and he will be fouled. And Nathan Thomas is going to have his hands full working against uh, uh, Wood there. Uh, just kind of needs to play a little bit smarter D as this will be, uh, he'll be needed here going forward in this game. So Wood makes the first from the free throw line. And Dylan Wood may have a long day at the free throw line ahead of him here tonight. He seems to get fouled every time he touches the ball. You know, that's the thing. I mean, you're going to be kind of a taller body and teams are just going to foul you. I mean, they're not trying to, but they will just because there is a height advantage. And the smaller guy thinks they had to play a little more aggressively in order to kind of ma uh, in order to match back up with you. Hey, we want to take the time to remind you that to go to our social media pages that we're on Facebook and on Twitter. Like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash tv19sports and follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash tv19sports. And if you go to our Facebook page during uh, Sports Path, you have a couple of chances to win some prizes on our trivia question. So hopefully that could be you or those people in the stands. That's right. Could be anybody. Yeah, not only able to win prizes through our Facebook page, but uh, able to get links to uh, some of the games that we broadcast, including uh, this one as well as others, and as well uh, old episodes of Sports Path on there. So we encourage everyone to check out our Facebook page and our Twitter page. And we're ready to resume things here as we are at the uh, White Bear Lake South Campus. And once again, 
Nathan Thomas getting the basketball down low, gets the bucket and the foul, and he's got a chance to tie this thing. Yeah, Nathan Thomas, uh, the last couple of possessions they've got, he's been their answer in the paint against uh, Santiago Lake, so hopefully that'll, he'll be the answer going forward in this game. You know, Coach Lockwood explained to us not a lot of experience uh, on this roster this year. In fact, Nathan Thomas featuring a little bit in the uh, JV game before us, so uh, he's getting a big opportunity here, and I believe he's got all six points. Um, that he's had on offer. We converted two uh, three-point plays so far here tonight. And he's got the Bears tied at 17. Trevin Nelson looking for somebody. Finds Carter Duncan. Back to Nelson. Yeah, it kind of looks like White Bears going in a 2-3 zone on their own. And Hickox trying to drive that baseline, as we've seen him do here tonight. Dish it off. Good idea, but even better job by the White Bear Lake defense uh, collapsing and uh, um, getting in those passing alleys. Yeah, it looked like there was about two Wildcats players. Didn't know who was supposed to get the ball there. But, uh, I mean, the Wildcats have just been playing a little bit sloppy here in the first half, and White Bear has been taking advantage of it. And maybe fooled a little bit by the record of the Bears coming into this one. And we mentioned before, uh, both these teams playing Matamidi this season. Uh, Chicago Lakes faring much better against uh, Matamidi. Although they only won by two points, Wiper Lake having a tough time uh, losing by quite a bit to the Zephyrs earlier uh, this year. And they'll say Schwartz took a step before the dribble, so he'll turn it over. Uh, we are tied, just under six minutes left to go first half. You know, I think for the most part, uh, Coach Lockwood has to be happy with how White Bear has been handling uh, Santiago Lake. I mean, they haven't gone on too big of a run, and uh, White Bear has always been there to kind of answer the call and tie it back up. Carter Duncan passing it. Trevin Nelson gets it. He'll throw it up from distance. That is long. Rebound goes to Kevin May. Carter Kahn looking to do something on offense. He'll find a cutting Broberg. Broberg to Thomas, to May. May Long looking for a foul. Thought there was some contact on the follow through. And we have an offensive foul. We're gonna say Trevin Nelson stuck out the arm there. And he'll get called for the offensive foul. And we'll have a timeout to take a look. There is head coach of Sasago Lakes, Greg Gagaro. And uh, fun facts, Sasago Lakes trying to pull off their third win against our Fab Five schools so far this year, playing three of the five Fab Five schools covered by TV19 Sports so far, coming away with victories against Montebidi and Hill Murray, and looking to make it three against White Bear Lake. Hey, we're always, just want to take the time to remind you that we're always looking for volunteers at On Location TV 19. If you have an interest in a television broadcast or you just want to work in the uh, uh, the band, <laughs> give Arlen Becker a call at 651-747-3821 or email Arlen at arlen at onlocationtv.org. Just a fun way to work with a bunch of great guys. Hey, that could be a future volunteer. We're even there. Yeah, getting great shots as always. So yeah, we always encourage uh, people to come see what we do and be a part of our team. And so far, so good, everybody. Another wonderful production being put on here for TV19 Sports. And as I was mentioning before, you know, our Fab Five schools, of course, White Bear Lake, Hill Murray, Tartan, North St. Paul, and Mata Midai. And uh, Chisago Lake's going up against three of those five teams this year with wins against Hill Murray and Mata Midai. So Sam Broberg bringing the ball up for White Bear Lake. He'll hand off to Kevin May. May dribbles to the top of the key, and the ball eventually ends up in the corner. Now in the hands of Schwartz, who gives it off. Uh, it looks like Sasha Lace kind of playing some man-to-man -man defense as they're kind of getting a little too worried that White Bear was starting to break down that 2-3 zone. Yeah, first time we've seen uh, the Wildcats in the man-to-man -to -man tonight. Thomas does a good job on the screen and roll. He'll kick, and the shot will go out. 
Aaron Hickox now into the game, number 11 for the Wildcats. Dylan Wood will get it underneath, and foul will come in. Looks like Thomas got a lot of the basketball there. Foul is called nonetheless. And, and that'll be his third foul. That is like. going to be his third. Yeah, it doesn't look like anyone's going to be coming in for him. And Coach Just Lockwood, yet. he'd mentioned that they're a little thinner than the than they already are um, in the front court due to illness. Uh, so hoping that he can just uh, kind of ride this out and uh, hope uh, Thomas stays off the foul sheet even more. Free throw is good. However, it's waved off due to a lane violation. Yeah, Nathan, Nathan Thomas has been playing extremely well. He's got a couple of baskets and has been playing smart by uh, passing it out too. Carter Kahn. Too strong on the land, rebound comes out and it's held between him, he and Dylan Wood. Possession arrow stays with White Bear, and so they will inbound. Sam Schwartz being swarmed by Wildcat defenders. Dylan Wood will wrestle it away. And Chisago Lakes will take over. Ball goes out of bounds, but we'll stay with the Wildcats. Take a look at Dylan Wood there. He's been uh, one of the toughest tasks so far here for the Bears. You know, it just doesn't seem like the, the Wildcats have been able to get too much going in the paint here uh, ever since like early going in the first half. So they've been kind of struggling a little bit. And, uh, it's been a fairly low scoring game, which I mean, if you're White Bear, this is a good opportunity for you and kind of kind of keep it close here hopefully till the end and uh, see what happens, especially with this uh, young team. Tip and out of bounds. Ball will stay with the Bears. Interesting decision by Lockwood, still keeping uh, Nathan Thomas in the game, even though he has three fouls. You gotta just wonder, I mean, you look at uh, Thomas compared to Wood, they are similar body sizes, so, and it's really kind of one of the, the only option White Bear Lake has in terms of that size, so you, you wonder if he just likes that matchup, just to get, just get a keep similar a body size on body. Him, yeah. yeah, you know, if he gets the five fouls and has to come out, I guess we'll deal with that when yep. that happens, but just kind of let it go for as long as it can. And that, as you said, you know, Thomas has done a nice job on the offensive end. I think picking up at least six points, if not more. So Von Stranke called for the foul, six team foul on the Wildcats. Kevin May dealing with a lot of pressure. He's looking for another foul. Carter Kahn trying to go off the dribble, gets into the lane, draws some contact, and will go to the line. Good job getting another foul in on Carter Duncan. That will actually put White Bear into the bonus. But Kahn will shoot two because he was in the act of shooting. Yeah, that'll also be Carter Duncan's second foul of the game, so that's kind of a good situation for White Bear to be in, getting him in a little bit of foul trouble before uh, the end of the first half. And Duncan kind of part of the Twin Towers here with the uh, Chisago Lakes. With, uh, he goes about 6'6", six, six, Wood 6'5". Six, so, so I think once White Bear goes back on offense, they gotta be looking towards Carter Kahn's direction and kind of see what he does if he'll play a little bit softer defense, which might lead to some turnovers or maybe to try and hopefully he could pick up a third foul. Hickox gets the loose ball, tries to hit it off the glass, goes a little bit strong, but Dylan Wood is there to clean it up. Uh, somebody got a little bit lazy on the defensive end and didn't block out uh, Woods there, and he gets the easy put back. Kevin May trying to make something happen off the dribble, and he took one too many steps trying to find the open man. The so Wildcats on top, 2018 here. Get towards the later stages of the first half. Carter Duncan tries the right-handed hook shot. 
Off the glass, too strong. Rebound comes to White Bear. Kevin May now picks it up. He tries to push the pace. Pass is a little wild, comes off the rim. Rebound to Hickox. Hickox nearly able to get it to Dylan Wood. And I think the ref missed it, ducking out of the way that the ball actually came last off Kevin May. You yeah, see you the see it right there. Ball. Dylan Wood may be getting the, last, the final touch after it comes off May's hand. Might be able to see that one again, but I think the ref got that right. Khan dribbles himself into trouble, but is bailed out with a nice pass. He goes baseline once again with the jump pass. And we'll get Khan off the ball, so we'll take another look at that pass, you see Wood there in white did touch it at the very last. Great shot from our camera crew. And nice job on the replay in the truck, fellas. As you saw it clearly. So the refs get it right here. Chisago Lake with the ball now. And that's Von Stranke, number three. Dylan Wood goes to the free throw line and then passes it back out. Ethan Hickox with it. He'll switch it over to his brother Aaron. That will be in and out as everyone's a little bit cold from the three-point line here to start. Sochet pulls up from two and he ties the game with a minute left to go. Just a beautiful jumper by him. It just goes down so smooth. Hickox nearly loses the ball. Carter Duncan trying to dribble. Desago somehow able to keep it. Yeah, this is the right a move by Hickox. Just kind of slow down this tempo. They're playing a little too fast. They're doing a good job of passing the ball quickly. Hickox leaves his feet, tries to get the pass off to Carter Duncan, but Duncan's foot is on the uh, baseline and the ball will go to the Bears. So Bears with a chance to take the lead here going into the half with 24 seconds left to go in a tie ball game. You know, this is the type of game that White Bear plays. I mean, they don't score very many points. They average about 50 points a game while uh, the Wildcats have been doing about 60 points. So they're kind of muddying this up. And if you're White Bear, you have to be happy to see that. So we're at 10 seconds here. White Bear holding for the last shot. Chet looking to take it. He hands off Kevin May. May with time running out. And it's just long. So we will go into the break all knotted up at 20 apiece. Yeah. Interesting first half to say the least. Not what everyone here would have expected. You know, I kind of thought on that last shot by White Bear, everyone looked a little bit too timid. They didn't want to be the last one to take the shot. Uh, someone's kind of have to answer the call if they keep it this close at the end of the game. That's right, you saw May step up and take the shot. Didn't get a whole lot of, he, he had kind of an open look there. Nobody really stepped up for Chisago Lakes. So it'll be tied 20 to 20 going into halftime. We'll have that second half for you when we return. Your daughter just had her first breakup. Do you A, put yourself in her shoes? <laughs> B, console her. Don't worry, sweetie. This is going to happen a lot. Or C, find her a new boyfriend. Thanks, single boys. <laughs> that was weird. As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. And we're back. In the midst of the action, as the second half has in fact started, but there has been no score. You see about 11 seconds ticked off, 20 to 20, and Chisago Lakes has just turned over the basketball, so White Bear will have it. Kevin May pushing it up, but we have a timeout for an injury. Looks like Carter Kahn took a shot to the eye. So we'll have a brief stoppage in play. Yeah, hopefully it's not too serious. Looks like he's all right. He's just going to have to leave the floor momentarily. You take a look there. Oh, came back quick to the second half, didn't they? Yeah, they did. Yeah. 
Lake Charles able to kick it out. Oh. Three seconds will be called before that. And unfortunate because the three-pointer fell after Charles got rid of that basketball. Now White Bear definitely content with shooting up some uh, three-pointers there, but that was when uh, obviously uh, uh, Chicago Lake was in a bit of a 2-3 zone. They switched it up half, man, man halfway through after uh, White Bear was kind of spacing out the floor a lot better. Yeah, it looks like White Bear is uh, doing a 2-3 zone of their own. And Dylan Wood gets the ball, nice little jump step. And he'll get it up and in. And Chisago reclaims the lead. Schwartz going baseline. He'll dish it off. And Blake Charles will convert. Nice job, Sam Schwartz, number 11, the freshman. Chisago finding Carter Duncan in the fast break. He'll make the uh, contested land. That was pretty quick, uh, just in a matter of seconds, and uh, just a nice late transition basket for the Wildcats. And Charles tries to throw up another hook again, asking for a foul there, a little bit of contact. And Duncan gets up the floor once again, and he'll get another easy two. And it looks like we'll have a timeout. Yeah, it is a smart timeout by Coach Lockwood. Uh, Chicago Lake, they played pretty sloppy here in the, fir in the first half. It looks like they're getting a little bit going here in, this, in the early start of the second one. Take a look at that basket at first. And there you see the pass into Carter Duncan for his second straight easy land. And you see some full court pressure uh, to start off this half once again from Chicago Lake. So we'll wonder if they're going to stick with that maybe a little bit longer. Uh, you know, it seems like they have been running it about all game and uh, still kind of like a low scoring game to ha like see a team just like run that full court press all game. But Chicago has been pretty sloppy with it due to turnovers. Yeah, White Bear Lake has actually broken it down a few times. You know, nice job passing the ball, uh, beating the press. Pass around there. Three pointer goes a little bit long, saved by Blake Charles. we will come back out to Knips. Knips throws up the three. That one way off to the left. And it'll sail out of bounds for Wildcat basketball. So the visitors leading 26-22, the early going of the second half of this one. Yeah, Chicago Lakes averages about 60 points. White Bear doing an excellent job in the first half. Uh, just limiting to that to only 20 points in the first half. Carter Duncan slamming that bounce pass into the breadbasket of Dylan Wood. He lays it in. That comes off the rim, and then he's called for the foul, going for the rebound. And not sure his scoreboard has that only as Woods' first of the game. They'll take their word for it on that one. So Dylan Wood picking up his first foul. Team's first as well. Foul off the ball, coming in number 23, Ethan Hickox, uh, getting called for the Wildcats. I thought he kind of got away with one in the last possession. It seemed like he pushed off the white bear then, and the ref didn't see it, but that time he definitely saw it away from the basketball. Blake Charles, nice uh, ball fake. Gets the defense off the feet, but misses the jumper. Chisago goes the other way. Trevin Nelson from deep, that is short. Dylan Wood will chase it down. He'll kick it back. Carter Duncan now throws up the right-handed hook shot and in. Yeah, that, Duncan. Was something, that was something we haven't seen too many was uh, Shashio Lake uh, getting some second chance points. I mean, White Bear doing an excellent job of just trying to get those rebounds or uh, even the Wildcats would kind of force an, a turnover there, which led to White Bear getting the basketball back. But we haven't seen too many second chance opportunities by these Wildcats. That was a nice hook shot in from Duncan. Oh, very impressive. Looked like he was a little farther away from the bucket than he would have thought when he turned around, but able to, I think he maybe just touched it off the glass and in. That'll open up the Wildcat lead, 28-22. Duncan doing it on defense now, jumping into the passing lane and picking up the steal. Duncan doing it, having some smart awareness, realizing not trying to force the issue, 
just stalls a little bit. And it looks like they're kind of trying to use uh, Dylan Wood as a bit of a decoy, working it down low to him, and he's passing it off of that once the defense collapses down. Uh, it's kind of seen that the last couple possession. Ball finds its way back out to Kevin May, top of the key. He gives it to Blake Charles, who gets bumped along the baseline as he goes up for the land, and it just comes out. Yeah, gets the pass there, goes up, does a nice move. Just can't get it to fall in to close the gap even farther. Yeah, for the most part, White Bear doing an excellent job. I mean, this Chicago Lakes team hasn't been able to get too big of a lead. It's been fairly close all game. And Blake Charles will convert that free throw. Uh, checking out of the game for the Wildcats, Dylan Wood will have a seat on the bench. Wonder if uh, White Bear Lake can be able to take advantage of that as uh, Chisago Lakes sitting a little bit of their size. Yeah, but they still got Carter Duncan out there, who's been a pretty big play here. And Duncan trying to continue his, the big start to his first half. Misses that initial opportunity, but gets his own rebound. And I believe he's up to eight points now here in the second half. So Wildcats now with a seven point advantage. White Bear Lake trying to hang on and keep this one close. Knips gets that one deflected. Looks like Carter Duncan got in on that play as well. Kicked out to Trevin Nelson. Nelson finally finding form from distance as he hits it. And Wildcats now lead by 10. As Asiago Lakes is in the midst of a 13 to three uh, run here to start off this second half. This game was just tied 20 to 20. But yeah, it seems like the Wildcats have found their groove. Yeah, big five minutes. I've been doing a lot of moving the ball around on offense, kind of uh, waiting for White Bear Lake to collapse on one side and then switching court and uh, finding an open shot on the back side. And the big reason is because Carter Duncan, like he's been getting to go offensively here uh, for Santiago Lake. And he didn't really take a whole lot of shots in that first half, but getting a lot of good looks here so far in the second. May drives the bucket just too long on the finger roll, and the rebound comes out to Chisago. Nice Ethan Hickox, nice head fake. He'll take it to the bucket. Yeah, it's just been night and day for the Wildcats. Like, they just look sloppy in the first half. And just a little more energy, a little more urgency. Uh, definitely noticeable here in this second half. As Chisago's really come out here firing. And we're going to have a timeout. And that will be the second team timeout for White Bear Lake here this half. They'll have two remaining. So you take a look at, well, now you take a look at the White Bear Lake bench. Yeah, so actually Lake just came out guns a blazing here. They're on a, they're on a 15 to three run, just continuing going that here in the last uh, six minutes. And, White Bear just has not been able to answer back, and it'll be interesting to see if we'll see uh, uh, Nathan Thomas coming back in the game. And, well, we want to remind fans to check out Sports Path here on TV19, and that is, of course, every other Wednesday live at 7 p.m. We got highlights of all the games we cover here on TV19, as well as post-game interviews and much more all about the sports community of our Fab Five schools and not to mention the prize giveaways that we do. We do a little bit of trivia through Facebook and give away prize for the correct answers that flood in uh, for those trivia giveaways. So please uh, tune in to Sports Path every other Wednesday. I believe those are going to be resuming January the 13th, and we might have some uh, new features and some new looks for you for the coming year. Yeah, always some good stuff, especially for your Fat Five schools. So you might even catch the highlights of this one. Uh, on that January 13th episode. So we're counting down to about 12 minutes left to go here in the second half. Chisago now leads it 35-23, but with that bucket, we'll make it 37-23. As number 40, Thomas Gillick gets in on the action. 
Yeah, Sasha Olace just looks a lot smoother versus the first half. I mean, everything's just coming easy for them. And they're really pressuring the ball on defense, making it difficult on the White Bear Lake offense. White Bear Lake trying to set things up. Kevin May penetrating. Uh, but they're going to get Blake Charles for the lower shoulder. And foul will have the ball going the other way. We'll get a look here as May gave it away to Charles. And ref says that Charles used the shoulder there. So the ball will be with the Wildcats. And you see it, in fact, there with Aaron Hick Hickox. He gives off. And now Ethan Hickox underneath the bucket. He misses a couple from close range. Blake Charles will get it. And White Bear Lake will start going the other way. Knips up to Kevin May. Yeah, White Bear just needs to get something going offensively. They've just been very sloppy here in the last few offense. Good look inside to Blake Charles. He takes a bump, but he'll get it off the glass, and it'll go. And that'll definitely help. This has to be another situation where White Bear just needs to string together a couple of good uh, possessions on defense and offense to try and get back in this game. I mean, it was only 20-20 at halftime, but man, Sasuke Lace has just been looking crisp. Yeah, number 45, Aaron Johnson now checking in for Chicago Lakes. He's a six foot five junior. And long three coming in, no good. Johnson fighting, gets his own rebound, gets another one and is fouled. So off the missed three from Gillick, Johnson doing some work on the boards and he'll find himself at the charity stripe. Still interesting to note that Dylan Wood is still out of the game for the Wildcats. And, uh, Quite the one-two combo and forwards here, him and uh, Carter Duncan. You see the Wildcats uh, incorporating a few players that we didn't see in the first half so far here. Wonder if maybe because they opened things up a little bit, uh, but still relatively close. So I'd say it's a little too early to start bringing in, you know, working in reserves, but. I mean, you know, like that lead could still evaporate if White Bear could go on a bit of a run. Absolutely, and they'll get a good chance after the turnover here. Sam Broberg did it up. And he maybe took one too many steps, was able to get rid of the ball. Roberg back with it. He gives a good head fake, goes baseline, dishes it off. Sam Schwartz driving, he'll pass. Schwartz now fighting for it, gets it, keeps it alive for White Bear. Nice job, Blake Charles, he'll drive and gets the floater to go, White Bear down 10. Actually, that was a good job out of him, and uh, Carter Duncan was there on the perimeter, so he didn't have to go to, uh, across too much height in the paint. Uh, good job deflecting the pass, but it falls right back to Chisago Lakes, and eventually finished off by Aaron Johnson. Yeah, just a fantastic pass by Duncan. Just a smart move to give it to Johnson, who's wide open. Three's up, and it's good. Austin Sochet. Help White Bear just kind of cutting this lead back down to single digits, getting a little bit, just trying to chip away. A risky pass intercepted Kevin May, and he'll take the bump. That'll be the fifth team foul on the Wildcats. And Matt Moore called for that one. Moore, the sophomore guard. And 
after the foul, Carter Duncan will take a seat. However, Dylan Wood will come in to replace him. Dylan Wood, good job on defense, ripping the ball away from the... And foul coming in there. Yeah, just actually like defense by Dylan Wood, as you said before, just stripping it away. It kind of seemed like he was kind of his, on the backswing to uh, get it off. Yeah, using his size and strength, stripped it away from Sochet. Sochet then called for the foul. But Chisago unable to do anything with that possession, and White Bear will have the ball. They trail nine. You know, White Bear doing exactly what they need to, making sure that White Bear doesn't score on any. Sochet steps back, makes a move on Wood, gives it away. Sochet doing a good job. You know, I think that if, if you're White Bear, you definitely want to get Dylan Wood kind of there on the perimeter, because I think he's a bit out of his element there, and I, you can surely beat him across if you have more space. So Chet gives up the ball. Charles is now hands off to Kevin May. White Bear looking to do something from the half court. Knips drives, he'll dish it off. May throws up the shot. And that'll bounce up and over the backboard and go back to the Wildcats. You know, White Bear, they're pretty content just passing around, trying to get the three-point game going for them. Just hasn't seen too many drop tonight, but they have had a couple. We'll have a timeout. Looks like it will be White Bear once again, Coach Lockwood. Oh, excuse me. Looks like that will be a Chisago timeout. And that'll be their first of the half to take a look at their bench. So nine point game, White Bear doing a good job keeping this one close, uh, closer than a lot would have expected. Yes, the shot show late kind of came out, guns blazing here uh, to start the second half, but then they kind of cooled off and White Bear has been shipping away at this lead, uh, stringing together both on defense and trying to make sure that the Wildcats haven't scored any. So they've just been uh, chipping away this lead slowly and they're still in this game with plenty of time left in. That's right. You can definitely see some of the youth and inexperience in this White Bear Lake team, uh, but I think they're playing a very good game here tonight. You know, they're kind of doing what they've been told, you know, staying within themselves, not making too many, you know, unforced mistakes, things like that. You know, a lot of the turnovers and things have been, you know, nice defense uh, from Chisago, and a lot, you know, a lot of just possessions that haven't gone their way, just missed shots. You know, things like that, and only getting, you know, one chance where Chisago's right on the defensive rebound. Yeah, for sure. And I think that if you're White Bear, you want to see this game be a low scoring game because that gives you the best chance in order to pull off this upset. Yeah, and I think, you know, with the size difference, uh, it's definitely been a big win for White Bear keeping the score uh, to what it is, especially with Chisago's uh, tendency to try and get really high percentage shots with that uh, size advantage. You know, not many shots from outside. Speaking of a shot from outside, Kyle Knips starting to prove while he's, why he is the leading scorer of this White Bear Lake team. As he makes it a six point game, Chisago nearly turning it over, kicking back out more. He'll give off to Hickox. Hickox drives up and under and good. You know, that's been the first points that uh, Sasha out of the Lakes have been able to score in the last couple of possessions. Inbound is tipped, that falls to Hickox. No convert the easy two once again. Yeah, I think that's some inexperience showing its uh, ugly head here for White Bear. And we'll have a foul on Wood. Looks like he got a hand up on the drive. And yeah, that'll be his fourth penalty, so he'll probably be coming out of the game. And it is his fourth foul. You know, early in the half, they had him on the scoreboard his first, and I thought that couldn't be right. And I think that's one of the reasons we saw him taking a rather lengthy seat here early in the half, as he was on three fouls, now on four. Uh, so he'll be sitting for uh, indefinitely until later. Yeah, but on the plus side, uh, Carter Duncan made an appearance here for the Wildcats. So Duncan back in, he's actually had a very good uh, second half, and he'll get 
good position and get the foul. He'll be going to the line. Duncan good on the first. That'll open it up to an 11 point advantage. Yeah, Sashiago's forwards have been doing a great, fantastic job of production on the offensive end and like getting points, especially on the free throw line. And that's been kind of a weakness here for White Bears. They just don't have anybody who can match up uh, at the forward positions in the, in the front court. Yeah, Sashiago definitely with the uh, not only the free throw attempt advantage, but you know, obviously the makes as well with how many more they've attempted. A good defense once again from the Wildcats. They force the turnover. Hickox giving off to Trevin Nelson. Nelson trying to work it into Duncan. Refs will say that Blake Charles had an arm around Duncan. Foul will come in. And Chisago not quite into the bonus yet. See Nel Nelson. Swings it to the other side. And here's where the foul will come in as they try and work it back. And yeah, not too much there. Charles was kind of coming over the back to reach in and deflect the pass. Is what the ref saw. Regardless, they call the foul. That was the sixth team foul on the Bears. Wildcats with seven right now. So White Bear Lake will go to the free throw line uh, from here on out. Uh, it seems like Sasha Lake is kind of content with just passing the ball and maybe kind of working this clock down a little bit. As they're kind of content, like they're not really looking inside, uh, trying to get a high percentage shot. Well, you can tell they too are a well-coached, disciplined team. Kind of playing a little uncharacteristically, I would imagine, that first half. They, they were sloppy. I mean, they had a lot of turnovers. They weren't getting the second chance points, which you kind of expect them to have since they are the taller team. And especially with your uh, Carter Duncan and Dylan Wood, just they didn't seem like they would got too many second chances. Duncan there hitting a nice jumper. As he's really come to life in the second half as a part of that. Yeah, he's definitely been the spark plug here uh, for the Wildcats and has probably about close to about 10 points just in the second half alone. Charles under the basket on the right side block. He'll kick it out. Three comes up from Knips. That goes in and out. And Hickox now with the rebound. Hickox, too, number 23 here for Chisago Lakes has had a nice second half. He did a good job early on in this game driving baseline and uh, either getting an easy lay-in or kind of giving it off to Dylan Wood in the paint. And then uh, in the second half, doing a good job kind of just driving the basket and getting some easy looks. Carter Duncan has it deflected from behind. That'll force or lead, excuse me, to the turnover for White Bear. Knips has the ball knocked away from him. Because the ball's loose, he's a little out of control, and that'll be an offensive foul. You see, it's Aaron Hickox on the defense, as well as Carter Duncan. Duncan taking the charge. And that's what you kind of need to do. I mean, Duncan has about two fouls, and maybe try and get him in a little bit of foul trouble. We're down to about four minutes. Ball thrown a little bit wildly. Nelson tries to save, unable to, and White Bear Lake will take over. thing we haven't mentioned is uh, the absence of Carter Kahn after he took that shot to the eye. Um, not sure if he checked, ever checked back in and certainly haven't seen a whole lot of him since. Yeah, just kind of looking over to the sidelines, it looks like it's still kind of giving him some yeah. issues and kind of still rubbing it. I can even see from the scores table here that it's swelled a little bit. Uh, so you know, that, that's a big loss for them, you know, senior leadership. Um, he's a big athlete at the school as well, you know, multi-sport athlete, so 
On a close game like this, one of the guys you like on the floor. Especially for such a young team. Absolutely. And you see the freshman Sam Schwartz for White Lake getting the steal and doing a nice job drawing contact as he gets close to the basket. And there's a look at Carter Kahn on the bench. Yeah, it's looking a little kind of red. I mean, yeah, probably shouldn't make too many medical claims on my end, but uh, it's still, still kind of giving, it looks like it's still irritated. And Schwartz good on the first. Yeah, not, not, not exactly sure what it is in terms of medical, uh, medical terms to be precise, but uh, whatever it is, it's kept him on the sideline. He doesn't look very comfortable. So Swartz hits the second. Yeah, also, we haven't really seen too much of uh, Nathan Thomas either here in the second half. Uh, Grant has like three fouls, but I think if you want to kind of spread out the floor and do more three-point shooting, Thomas gives you a bit of a bigger body. You can maybe at least try and contest for some of those rebounds and uh, keep the ball on your end. You know, he was doing a pretty good job here. As I mentioned, you know, he was on the JV roster, was in that game, so. Maybe didn't anticipate uh, having to use him a whole lot here tonight, but when he came in, he, he did a great job. Uh, converted a couple uh, three-point plays and uh, did some disruption on defense. Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure he's made an appearance here in the second half. So good job breaking the press. Schwartz, he just off to Blake Charles. Charles has to be the leading scorer here so far for the White Bear Lake Bears tonight. He's done a nice job, even being undersized, scoring uh, from inside. Bit of a scramble there. I look like uh, Coach Lockwood wanted his players to play full court press. He's trying to motion his players to get up there and attack the ball. So loose ball foul after the scramble. Ethan Hickox will go to the line shooting one and one. First shot is up, and it's in play. Not too many reacting to it. I'm starting to second guess myself, but it was a one and one. Kevin made pulling down the rebound for White Bear. So down to two minutes left to go in the game. White Bear down 10, still in this one. Blake Charles makes a move and gets the land. What a move by number 15. That's exactly what you need to do if you're White Bear. I mean, now you're down by 10 points with two minutes to go. You need to score on every possession going forward because there's going to be so few opportunities. And Charles now on defense steps in, gets the steal and the foul. He'll go to the line. You know, just an amazing play, just getting it done at both ends, just reaching for that ball, stealing it out like a cornerback in an interception. And I'm not so sure, number 40, Shisago. Thomas Gillick it anticipated Charles to be there quite so quickly, turned around to throw the uh, inlet pop pass, and he was right there. You know, we were kind of expecting to see uh, the white, white Bear go a little more full court press even more in this game, but they're really turning it on here because they need to down uh, eight points here with uh, 90 seconds to go. But yeah, man, it's just an amazing steal by Blake. I mean, they are undersized, but you got to wonder with that speed, that they might have been able to you know, do a lot of good things with that press all night. You know, we talked to uh, Coach Keith Lockwood before the game, and number one is playing a complete game, and they have been playing fairly well here. They kind of, it kind of got away from them in the second half, and now they're kind of in a hole here with a minute 42 left and control the tempo. For the most time that they have been, um, they've been doing a good job. I mean, uh, you s they've been doing pretty well. Uh, they kind of limited second chance points here for uh, the Wildcats, they cancel out the height. Um, the forwards for Sashiago have been playing extremely well, so I don't know if they've quite been able to do that. Carl Duncan especially turned it on here, get it going for Sashiago Lake, and uh, uh, Dylan Wood has been kind of a mismatch for the Wildcats as well, going against White Bear. Um, but now, I, I think White Bear has done kind of what they needed to do in order to put them, keep themselves in this game. And Coach Lockwood said this was kind of a barometer to see where this team was at uh, compared to the first game they played versus the 10th. Charles trying to complete the three-point play, and he's unable to. And I think, you know, what, what they haven't been able to do in terms of the complete game and canceling out the height and you know, the tempo stuff, a lot of that is inexperience. And, and, you know, with the canceling out the height, 
I don't know if they were able, ever going to be able to do that. I, honestly, I think they, they've done a good job canceling out as best as they could. You know? For sure. I mean, I could, I could picture Dylan Wood and Tartar Duncan dominating this game to a point where they had this team up 20 points. Right. Uh, they just haven't won as it in the case. Yep. So I think that's a success. Uh, you know, there's success there for White Bear Lake. And that, you know, and like the one thing that hasn't can't. been the, the factor that lost them this game. You know, and one thing that they could do in order to cancel it out was go more full court press, which I was kind of under the pressure that we would see a lot more of that when we talked to coach before the game, but that certainly hasn't been the case. So one and one here now. Trevin Nelson, he'll hit the first. You wonder if maybe Coach Locke would just think about the inexperience of this roster, just <clears throat> maybe some of the, you know, the negatives that could come from the, the full court press. Uh, but, so, you know, so far so good uh, so from what we've seen here tonight. It's been some of their best, uh, yeah, opportunities to score the basketball. And, you know, there has been quick opportunities for them to do it because uh, Sashiago runs a press of their own. And they have broken it nicely a couple of times. Schwartz gets the long three. That just rattles off right. He had a good look. Carter Duncan pulls down the rebound. And the ref will say, yeah, Reach came in. Yeah, Charles and May were trying to set the trap there to try and force a turnover, but uh, Carter Duncan ends up going to the line. And with just about, well, 50, 49 seconds left to go in this one, Duncan going to be able to put them up, uh, up 12 if he makes both of these. This one's all about over. You know, I think the biggest difference in this game has been Carter Duncan, who just, I mean, he didn't do, he played well kind of in the first half, but really got it going here in the second half, and it has been all the difference uh, in the second half. I'm going to tell you something else I've been impressed with uh, for the Chisago Lake team is that when their big guys go to the free throw line, they convert they, their opportunities. Yeah, yep. Both Carter and Wood. I mean, that's always been one of the most frustrating things about basketball for your basketball team is like your big guy just unable to convert those free throws. But as you said before, yeah, Carter and Wood, they've been doing a fantastic job. Yeah, and with players of those size, they are going to attract fouls, you know, whether you like it or not. And it's just the position that they play is they're just going to get fouled. You know? <laughs> and some of the si size of uh, Dylan Wood, you know, basically the only way you're going to stop them. Is you're, <laughs> you're, gonna, you're either going to find another kid that big or you're going to have to follow them. If you're lucky enough to have another kid that big, well, <laughs> So Thomas Gillick now from the free throw line. He'll convert the first. Chisago is in the double bonus, so they'll be shooting two from here on out. And if Chisago actually follows the Bears once again, uh, Bears will be in the double bonus as well. That ball, that three is off. Chisago will slow it up as we're under 20 seconds to go. Chisago's really been good all night at the line. Something that you can kind of see is probably a point of emphasis with the squad. You know, take those uh, things that the other teams give you. And in basketball, big thing is free throws there. So Aaron Hickox will hold the ball as the final horn sounds. Chisago Lakes wins this one 55 to 41. Good job by White Bear Lake hanging in for a long time, but Chisago able to open it up at the end. Uh, for Michael Lawrence, I'm Sam Erickson. I want to thank everybody for watching our presentation of high school basketball here on TV19 Sports. And final once again, Chisago Lake victorious 55 to 41.